Okay, so hello everyone. Okay, so this is hello Wolfie. everyone. Okay, so this is hello Wolfie. everyone. Let me take this out. Sorry, just checking the feedback on the sound. It was good. Okay, so let's go again. Hello everybody. This is Wolf. Today we'll be taking a look at uh, indie game that I already did the chapter one for it on my YouTube channel. It will be called. It's a game called Tiny Bunny. It's a Russian visual novel. It's a pretty cool looking game. Um, the story certainly looks interesting. And we'll be taking a look today now at chapter two. But how things are going to work. As the, the full game, quote unquote, that you buy on Steam. Uh, it's the prologue or chapter one. And then it goes to the other chapters as you, as you are playing. So I'll be doing again chapter one here on the stream, but this version, uh, this recording will not be on YouTube. Just the, um, the second part, the chapter two is the one that I'm going to put on YouTube. So not the whole video will be there, but I think that's already enough um, and it will be good nonetheless. So uh, one more update before we play Tiny Bunny. Uh, I tried near again and take a look at the updates on Proton and Experimental and all the other versions, including the customs, custom Proton, but they still aren't working correctly and I'm not being able to see the rendered cutscenes. Uh, I checked and there is somebody that made a custom Proton for Nier, so that they said that it's possible to play the game uh, after the that part that we recorded um, this week but I'm not gonna do it because when we get to the end of the game from that from the report and uh, the game crashes again so I want to have the full experience of it so I'll be waiting for the game to be completed so I can play it and Resident Evil 8 is another game that I want to play it as well but it's still not working on Linux it's giving it's giving some problems uh, again, with a Proton, but um, there are some people that are being able to test it, especially uh, a custom Proton that is Proton TKG, I think that's the name, from what I've been uh, looking, and it's set to work. I tried it, the demo did not work, so I will not buy the game just yet, because I think it's some problem with some kind of media foundation or something that is making the game not work and well today we're gonna do tiny bunny as i said i'm gonna open the game and it's it's loading and as soon as it loads i'll be sharing the screen the stream oh man this screen sorry i was <laughs> oh man i'll be sharing the screen with everybody else so the game is open up it's opening Okay, what I'm gonna do, I did test the game and um, it's, uh, it's now voice acted. If you watch the prologue of this game or if you play the prologue or if you watch it on my channel as well, you see that is voice acted. But um, with the voice acting I will not be talking when they are talking. It's a Rus Russian voice acting and it looks pretty cool. And I will be just reading it when there is no voice acting in the middle of it. And I'll be using the mouse, so I enable the mouse to appear on screen. And I'll be using the mouse so you guys can uh, follow what I'm looking at and see what I'm trying to read. Okay, I think this way will be a better experience for everybody. So I'm gonna share the game screen right now, Tiny Bunny. I think... Now the game is going to show for everyone. Let me just check. Okay, the mouse is it's moving. Yes, yes, okay. So the mouse is good too. And let's go. Uh, they added the Chinese, I think it is, the language now. So people from other country can read it too. So let's take a look. As I said, now we're going to be uh, looking for the quote-unquote whole game, chapter one. Then after that, chapter two. So let's take a look. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Tiny Bunny is a game that talks about a boy named Anton. 
and he stay in, in the house that lives that he lives near the woods and he starts seeing some strange creatures as he start looking at looking at things so it's a pretty um, terrifying tale but looks cool as I said and let's play it let's stop with the chit chat new game The wind clawed at my window all night long. It wandered the fields and howled like hungry beast. An endless song, weaved from all sorts of voices, shrill, gentle, sneery, twinned in the air. They were shouting and laughing, and arguing about something. Someone was running through the snow, while casting long shadows that would occasionally clip close to my bed. Our house had a mind of its own, the creaky old, mi old mind of a building that had seen a lot in its days and was seemingly trying to share its wisdom with the inhabitants. The lonely house faced the forest and the dark green ticket gazed back with its hollow eyes, rustling, whizzing, swaying back and forth. One could come out and stand at the edge of the forest to reassure themselves there was nobody behind the crooked trees. Fuzzy silhouettes swaying in the wind couldn't possibly do any harm. It's just a plane of light and shadow. Just a play. I knew it was just my imagination. I was already 12 after all. Still... Episode 1, The Owl Will Arrive Убери книгу немедленно. Сколько раз говорила, не читай за столом, вредно. Сидишь, сутулился весь. Хайд. I didn't protest and put the book about Conan the Barbarian aside. I was stuck on a line I couldn't understand after reading it three times anyway. Olya had already finished her breakfast and was munching on some cookies. She was so enthusiastic she almost looked like your typical girl from commercials. I, on the other hand, was still trying to drill a hole in the plate with my eyes, as if it would make the porridge disappear. Hazy anxiousness wheeled up inside, all because of the mysterious sleepless night, the black forest around our house and the gloomy wind. The longer I waited, the colder the lumpy white substance became. I looked like a, it looked like a jellyfish from the coast Costo Odyssey? I think that's how you pronounce it. I love that show. I wonder how horrifying the bottom of the ocean is, or how cold the, the black forest is at night. The spoon fell out of my hand. Mom showered me with cold glare from her green eyes. I had 10 seconds to catch my breath before battling the nasty, the nasty porridge once again. I felt around for the spoon. What is this cave carved on the other side of the table? Karina. Huh, that's my mom's name. I guess she carved it out with something pointy when she was little. She sure was a rascal, damaging the furniture like that. She would scold me for a week if I did something similar though. Should I, remi should I remind, remind her about it? Sorry. No. She's been in a bit of a bad mood lately. I imagine her being my age, sitting under, the t under this table. I wonder, was mom afraid of the dark back then? Or the sounds coming from the attic? Or the thick forest? I imagine my grandma coming into my little mom's room, sitting at the edge of her bed, where Olya 
sleeps nowadays, and saying this in her soft, smooth voice. Тайга особое место, детятка. Она к тебе присматривается, принюхивается, словно хочет понять, что ты за зверь такой. Понравишься, в беде не бросит. А будешь проказничать, схватит зубачок и утащит с собой под землю. Тут и дело с концом. Grandma was caring, she never fought with anybody, never yielded, never swore. Those were the times without the maidening screams until late at night, without smashed dishes and mutual accusations. Our parents used to love each other back then. I remember listening in on one of their conversations by chance. They were talking about Grandma getting prepared for her funeral. She had already bought a casket, and she called it her cute funeral box. Guys, just a second, I forgot the Discord open, gonna close it here. Just a little bit, and uh, sorry about it. And it's closed, let's go back to the game. Okay, I'm back. Okay, and she called it her cute funeral box. It waited for its time in the closet. Patiently. It was black, upholstered with meat colored material on the inside. I saw it when my grandma was getting buried. The house didn't change since the time she was alive. Only all of the photos were gone. Glass covered pictures with gray faces of my ancestors. They all had a dead but watchful look in their eyes. I crawled out from under the table. Oilia was done with her cookies and was looking at my chair like a sly woodland creature. I turned my gaze toward the frosted window. There were a lot of dark pines outside, but they didn't grab my attention. The pattern of frost formed a picture on the glass. Oilia, look at the trees! Where? It looked almost like those optical illusion thingies they put on the back of the student, note, student notebooks. A mixture of lines at first glance, but if you blur your vision a little bit and look under a certain angle. Да не на улице, на стекле. Смотри, вот нос, вот. Ну-ка, доедай. Да, да, сейчас. Я ничего не вижу. Живо. Совсем немного осталось. А, вот! Но все равно не похоже. А я говорю, похоже. Не -а. Sorry about the fireworks, guys. Похоже. Прекратите! Ну что за дети? Now I couldn't see the fox either. It disappeared. Went away. Only the frost patterns, similar to stretched out needle, needle leaves, kept creeping up the glass. My dad entered the kitchen with long, measured steps. I want to have a beard like his when I grow up. Like, uh, yes, that's right. Mom would always ask, joking, Come on, shave it off, it stinks. This was long ago. Nowadays, rumbling doors and weedy comebacks were an everyday occurrence. Olia always covers, covers her ears whenever she hears something like, what's the point in all this, through the wall. It's all for your sake, Dad would reply, for the sake of our family. I would always caught every sound in fear of hearing the most dreaded, deadliest word that started with a D. D-I-V-O. I don't even want to finish. It was scary to imagine that me and my little sister could be torn apart and taken to two different families. Да что твоя леса? Вот у меня на окне сова. Опять ты со своей совой. Так ты же вчера мне верил. Никто ключи от машины не видел? Вроде оставлял на подоконнике. Вроде. Вроде оставлял, вроде нет. Вроде взрослый мужчина, отец двоих детей, а вроде... Перестань, пожалуйста, Карина. 
Дай мне спокойно собраться. В корзине твои ключи, возле телефона. Огромное тебе человеческое спасибо. Антон, ешь быстрее, а то как мученик сидишь. А сова? Не было там никакой совы. Была. Лазюки огромные, вот, и светятся. Ойля sprang up from the chair and placed her hands on her little face, imitating a pair of eyes with her fingers, the size of an apple each. В прошлом году бабай в шкафу, сейчас сова. Okay, so every time that the game uh, puts an underline under on a word, you, we can check out at the glossary. So let's take a look at that. So let's see, Babay. In Slavic folklore, a nocturnal spirit used by parents to treat their ill-behaving children. Okay, so it's just explaining the name. Let's go. Oilia shifted her gaze back and forth from dad to mom to me, but couldn't find any support. А ты не думала подружиться с ней, нет? Вымышленными мышами покормить, например? Не подначивай ребенка. Просто мала еще, и спать одна боится. Oilia pouted her lips in rebellion and rushed into the hallway. The staircase that led to the second floor creaked. Mom gave Dad a strict look. Oh, that look in her eyes. It's so uncomfortable to be pinned under it. Dad just snorted in reply and left, ringing with the keys he's just found. A minute had passed and the theme song from The Little Mermaid echoed through the house. It was stored on incredibly worn out cassette tape, which Dad already had to glue together once. It's so easy to fix objects by gluing them back together, for example. But how do you fix a relationship? How do you fix a relationship? Mon moved to the living room and I was left alone, anxiously stealing glances at the window. Oilia had trouble sleeping ever, sleeping ever since we moved to this house. She would toss and turn or, turn or curl up into a ball under her blanket. Sometimes she would jump up in the middle of the night and turn on the VCR. Cartoons helped to make her mind off all the trouble we had with the move, with the move and our parents. Oh man. And then Oilia said she saw that a giant flying monster outside her window. She became obsessed with it. Our parents did everything in their power. They tried every little trick to get rid of, to get rid of those ridiculous fears. Euler refused to sleep alone and didn't believe that the owl was just one of her, her night, one of her nightmares. After tonight, I was unsure what to make of my sister's words, what to think of it myself. Can nightmare be infectious? Just last night, I couldn't get a wink of sleep and end up thinking of what to expect in my new school. There were a couple of days left before the beginning of a new term. My imagination drew long, twisting hallways that lead to a classroom full of kids. But all the students behind their desks, the desks were simply dark figures, cut out using a template. Circular holes gaped, gaped in the middle of their faces, and pairs of eyes blinked inside those holes. It was as if some completely different creatures were looking at me from behind the flat black silhouettes. I'm hearing some noises. Their cruel glares, filled with icy sneers, made me shiver from head to toe. Will I survive here? Won't they gang up on me and beat me down? Stomp on me with their bloody shoes. The damn school can burn for all I care. I just wish for anything to happen to it. Doesn't really matter what. I didn't want to go there that badly. I didn't want to see people who are just itching to smack me on the head, trip me up, think of a new offensive name for me, worse than the previous one. 
I felt like the glasses I wore made me an outsider or some sort of a monster. My gaze slides across the drawing hangs on the wall. I couldn't consider myself a great artist, but Euler begged me to hang them. Drawing was the only thing that made me happy as of late. The small circle of friends I had also enjoyed my paintings, and they promised to call me from time to time. Sometimes I imagine mom picking up the phone and saying in a cold voice, you've got the wrong number. Or, Anthem is not around. Anthem is not around. I imagine my future classmates lying in their beds just like me, listening to the hounds of invisible were werewolves outside their windows. Maybe my new classmates will like me after all. But who would ever like a boy with thick glasses? I mean, my dad used to wear glasses when he was little, and now he's married to the most beautiful woman on the planet, my mom. The house creaked, pressed by the wind. The condo we used to live in, a nine-floor concrete building, buzzed with the neighbor's drill, mumbled with a TV set from behind the wall, cried like a baby from the big family next door. Our current house, though I can't really call it new, was complete, completely different. It was silent and easygoing during the day. Its shadows lay dormant in the corners on the closet cobwebs and under the stairs. But they all woke up during the night. Something was watching me from every corner, almost as if the old photos of my diseased family with their ashen eyes were hanging on the walls in place of my drawings. The floor was squeaking, rusty drains were moaning, the attic was occupied by noisy drafts. One could think the house was performing some sort of demonic melody. And then I realized I was, in fact, hearing music. It was already playing for a good while. Somewhere at the edge of my perception I could hear a flute. It was mixed in with the sound of the wind, of the creaking old house, and my thoughts too. I stood up and rushed to the window. I wanted to reassure myself that this music was nothing more than a product of my imagination. It's not like someone is playing it there amidst the cold snowy night, right? Open. Someone was dancing in the field. Black silhouettes I could barely make out, with the dark forest as their background. They jumped around, basked in moonlight, bumped into piles of snow, rolled around and crawled on all fours. The stories about wolves playing under the moon came to mind, but those were clearly not wolves. They stood upright at times, circled around holding hands and whipping up snow, disappearing into the shadows of a brief moment and then coming back. Something bizarre was going on. Shadows dancing in the starless abyss made my imagination go wild, making me anxious at the same time. Suddenly, the music had stopped. Dancing shadows froze in place and I could swear, pierced me with their eyes. One of the silhouettes immediately parted from the bizarre shadow carnival and sprinted across the field with giant leaps. It glided on the squeaky snow without leaving any prints until it was devoured by the pitch black shadow of my house, which became even darker and thicker. Uh, just to point out, the animation was pretty good. My heart was jumping around like the bird inside a cage. I shut the curtains with a swift motion and stepped back towards the bed. They saw me. A freezing torrent of fear washed over me. I stood in the middle of a perfectly dark room and listened to some unwanted guest move and scrape around looking for an entrance. The, so the sound moved to the right, then circled around the house. Now my guest should be at the front door. I jumped into the bed and covered myself with the blanket as if it could protect me. The shackles of fear locked my muscles. My muscles. I remembered the funeral, my grandma lying there, 
hands crossed on her chest, her facial features sharp like that of a thin doll, ants running up and down the legs of chairs that hold, held my grandma's casket. I imagine those little creatures climbing up her head and pulling up her eyelids with their tiny legs. Then her wink wrinkly eyeballs would once again move inside their sockets and should be able to see her grandchildren. I was chanting the spell she taught me through the whole procedure. And now, lying under the blanket and listening to the squeaks in the house, I was repeating the same words. There, okay, so there is no sound here. There lay lard and ashen hair, for they spawn from devil's lair to feast and always live alone. God's faithful servant named Anton. This, this is a new image. Bizarre sounds had disappeared. I cautiously peeked out from under the blanket and saw curtains waving around like a hangman. And then the night dosed me with a new portion of boiling terror. Oh, okay, the, uh, this uh, scene here wasn't in the prologue, but from what I'm seeing now, it's much better than the prologue. If you didn't watch it, go take a look. It's different from this, but now, what I'm seeing from now, it looks better. The sound scratched at my eardrums. In reality, something or someone were scratching at the front door, hurried, hurriedly clawing at wood, demanding to be let in. The door was shut. Dad had become very cautious recently, so he installed a study lock. I remember him staring at the forest in intentionally as if he was looking for someone. Oh, someone is inside the house. I hugged my knees, placing my chin, my chin between them, and drilled the door with my eyes. It was so flimsy and weak before the might of darkness. So I think they will go back to the, the prologue scene, but the addition of Anton in the bed was pretty cool. And then... The doorknob twitched slightly. Then it turned halfway, once, twice, as if the person who tried to enter had no hands. The doorknob tilted once more and then started clicking violently. My jaw cramped from fear. My wet fingers clutched the blanket. The door creaked and opened. The wind taunted me, moaning inside the thin drains. Now, now you will see. The door was wide open, man. I already saw this scene in the prologue, but it's still good. Oh man, I'm <laughs> I'm scared right now. The darkness reeked inside the carnivorous mouth of a doorway. It was as if the night itself was calling out to me, flapping its black wings and squeaking with rusty hinges. I was trembling, ensnared by the web of darkness that hung in the corners of my eye, of my room. Sorry, waiting for the one who weaved it to come out of the gaping black hole. My abdomen tightened and my chest rose up, ready to exhale a desperate scream. But before I was able to do anything, the darkness asked me. My sister's pale face protruded from the thick shadows. I almost screamed from relief. Olha, я, я не сплю. Что случилось? Olya frowned and stuck out her lower lip, a clear sign that she was about to cry. Она опять прилетела и пялится на меня. Прогони ее, Тоша. Прогони, пожалуйста. Я так боюсь. 
The fear that was tormenting me just a minute ago crawled away and hid somewhere in my stomach. I needed to calm Olya down. Это был сон, глупая. Не пугайся. Сны не кусаются. Никто тебя не обидит. Olya sobbed. Sobbed. She was trying her best to believe me. But was I sure myself? У меня есть идея. А пойдём к тебе в комнату. Видик посмотрим. Спящую красавицу, например. Тебе же нравится этот мультик? Почему у спящей красавицы принца у меня эта страшная птица? That question took me by surprise. Ладно, давай посмотрим Золушку. My thoughts became tangled, fuzzy. What was that? What stood me with its eyes while dancing feverishly under the moon? The darkness was clinging to the window, and it couldn't be fooled by Grandma's old chants. It couldn't be satisfied with a feast of lard and long ashen hair. Tusha, ты идешь? Да, да, сейчас. Animation is so good, man. That was actually scary. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to laugh at Oilia and her owl in the morning. Who could be visiting us here in the middle of nowhere? We don't know anyone around here. So persistent. I felt extremely unsettled just from a silly thought that our morning guests would come from the woods. I could barely hear voices coming coming from the front door. My mind was urging me to hide. In the closet, under the table, behind the curtains where Olya always hides. I felt like kettlebells were tied to my feet, but I still dragged them toward the hallway. A couple of policemen towered over me in the doorway. They smelled like frost and worry. My mom always winced and grumbled, and grumbled the moment she saw patrol cars, worse than bandits. At the moment, though, she looked somewhat confused. Здравствуйте. The senior officer, who wore a grim expression, nodded. Okay, so this scene, uh, when I was reading the first time on the prologue, I thought actually it was the man that was saying. So now with the voice acting, I can confirm that it wasn't. In my mind, at least, I thought it was the, the man. The policeman held, a, held out a photograph to me. There was a ginger boy around the age of elementary school, picture with a wall carpet as the backdrop. He had a stripped cat in his hands and wore a wide smile. Нет. Точно. Посмотри внимательнее. Где мне его видеть? Я тут никого не знаю. Да и из дома то почти не выхожу. А может, видел в окно? Да. The window. Man, that actually would be terrifying just to not say any, uh, some other thing. Just the thought of you looking out your window at night if you live in a place uh, with a lot of uh, trees and things like that around you. It's pretty scary actually. Imagine if you just woke up at night listen to some music or some noises outside and you look there's things dancing man that would be actually so scary yes no. he sounded tired but his eyes his stare long and heavy was full of suspicion i squirmed i squirmed unwittingly unwittingly under the weight of guilt which his giant shadow cast over me. 
The policeman finally tore his eyes from me and glanced over the hallway, the stairway and the cracks in the ceiling, which I hadn't noticed before for some reason. Вы, кстати, как на новом месте? Попривыкли уже? Понемногу, только вот дочка маленькая по городу скучает. Скучает, значит. Из местных вас никто не беспокоит. Все хорошо, спасибо. The policeman pierced through me one more time with his gray eyes. My head started spinning. Может, вам помочь как-то? I asked that in a shaky voice to look like a polite boy and to end this unpleasant conversation sooner. Я вот стою и думаю, ты малец на племеша моего похож. Шустрый парнишка твоих лет, с такими же окулярами. Все книжками зачитывался, детективами. Когда летом погостить приезжал, говорит, что в школу милиции мечтает поступить. Как я, хотел людям помогать. I felt uncomfortable, as if a distant relative and not a policy officer stood before me. Oh, ребятушки, сидеть кого лучше дома, не вязывайтесь ни во что. Жизнь сейчас совсем другая пошла. Mom interjected in a cold voice. Мне ли не знать? Ну да ладно. Ты, Антон, в каком классе учишься? В шестом. Друзей ты на новом месте еще не завел? Пока нет. Я только после каникул в школу пойду. Тогда вот вам на всякий случай мой номер. Звоните, если... если узнаете что. The policemen... Sorry. The policemen were gone along with their shadows. The smell of cheap cologne and the photo of a smiling boy. His face still stood before my eyes. I wonder what it was like for him being all alone there. For some reason, I thought of the forest swaying in the wind. What did his poor parents feel? And what would my parents do if I would go on myself? Would they cry and trash around hysterically? Or would they accuse each other like they always do? And forget about me and forget about me eventually. Mom, а Вова этот в нашем лесу заблудился? Выходит, что так. Бедный ребенок. I looked out the window at the road. The police UAZ drove off drove off toward the village. So let's take a look at that. UAZ, a Soviet and Russian off-road freight. Freight. A passenger car brand which was produced on the Ulyanovsk car factory? I probably said that wrong. The officer's nephew came to mind when I was splitting off old paint from windowsill. I remember all the teenage mystery novels from the Black Kitty series I've read this summer. So let's check this one again. Black Kitty, a series of contemporary Russian, contemporary Russian, original or translated teen mystery books. Hmm, okay, so maybe something like Goosebumps, something like that. This was a teen book, right? More, more child book, but I think it would fit there. Your average boys and girls investigated all sorts of mystery there, mysteries there. They looked for clues, spied on suspicious people, and after a set of amazing adventures, bam, solved any complicated case. They became local celebrities and must made their parents very proud. I noticed a trail of policemen's footprints that lead to the forest, and then it clicked in my head. Why don't I start an investigation of my own? Maybe I will find the lost boy. And I will get a reward. Olya will be so happy. And not only Olya, mom and dad too. Maybe they will even forg forget about their quarrels for a while. Maybe I will even save us from the D word. 
I fantasized about buying Oilia a Tamagotchi and getting a cassette player and a bunch of tapes for myself. And a whole box of Kinder Surprise. This was actually pretty good. When was the last time our parents bought us any toys? Last autumn, I think. My dad had lost his job at the time. There's that, anno there's that annoying song about it. Let's check this. Accountant. A song by an all-female Soviet pop band by the name of uh, Combination. Thank you. That became widely popular in the early 90s. I had little to no idea what was the accountant's job like. They count money, I think. Neighbors used to envy us, but nowadays mom and dad barely had money to afford sweets, and dad would always divide a single chocolate bar between me and Olya. Sometimes I gave her my share too. No matter how much I wanted to eat sweets, she was still just a pipsqueak. I couldn't wait to go out looking for clues. Ага, сейчас. Чтобы потом милиционеры с твоей фотографией по домам ходили. Лес вон какой густой. А если мальчика звери дикие утащили, или того хуже. Even worse echoed through the hallway. I heard something echoed. I actually think that was it. That's a pretty nice touch in the sound department. I'm liking it. It's pretty good. Да я рядом буду. В лес не пойду. Что я тебе сказала? Мне дважды повторять. Лучше портфель собери или соли поиграй. The sound of splashing water came from the kitchen. It meant that the argument was over and mom had the last word. Okay, so let's check. Uh, so for uh, anybody that don't know how it works, the exploration part of this game, as this game is advertised as, is a non-linear horror story. I think that uh, what they said on the the so the bio of the game uh, when they talk a little bit about the game. Uh, so the eye here, up here, I can look at stuff. So there's a cross, there's a toy here, the telephone, and I can interact interact with them, and they are things in the scenery that I can see what they are and there are things that I can interact like I did with the book in the beginning uh, the curtains uh, in the room and everything else so when I click here on the door my character will probably say something and do something after that the dark is stuffy closet mom says it smells like mice but how would she know there is smell she hates when I stick my nose in there She's afraid I will cut myself on the freshly sharpened axe. And Oile can't even be lured close to it. She thinks Babe is living there. I'm probably saying it wrong, but I, I would say it like that. I tried to help her fight her fears once. I opened the door and turned on a dim lamp so she would see there was nothing but cob cobwebs, dead stools and scratched walls. She still didn't believe me, and I liked to hide in the closet and listen to Oila count outside. One, two, three, better hide from me. And then drag her feet on the creaking floorboards, hoping that she wouldn't need to look for me in the cramped monsters then. Let's check the toy. And if you don't look, use the eye when I interact with something like this. Make some noise, and if there is an eye, but I'm not activating it, when I pass the mouse, do the same thing. You do some noise. Mom's pack top, a family relic. My mom played with it when she was little, then she gifted it to me. Oily was next in this succe succession line. The toy belonged to her now. She stared at the dancing spindle as if it could show her something fairy tale or maybe even our future now even my little sister was a bit too old for the old is quickie peg top okay let's check the cross this cross had seen so many people come and go in the in this house it was black as if this as if it was oh man 
It was black, as if it absorbed all human sin from the long ears it was hanging under the ceiling. After Grandma died, Mom was going to take it off and hang a horseshoe in its place as a lucky charm. But she cut herself with the cross, with the cross's sharp corner, and almost fell from the step ladder. Dad called it a sign from above and ordered the cross to be left alone in its rightful place. Let's check the telephone. My parents prohibited, prohibit, prohibit me from making long-distance calls, but from time to time I really want to hear my old friends. Sometimes I would just pick up the phone, listen to the low hum of the zoomer and the distant crackling, imagining the wind howling in the ice-leading chords. Okay, so let's go outside. Whip you. That's cruel. Okay, let's go to the kitchen. Oh, okay. So this is this is new. Um, and mom is doing a little noise when I use the mouse. So this is new. Uh, on the um, the prologue, there was nothing written on mom, so it wasn't pointing out that she is something to interact with, that you can talk with her. So it's a nice touch as well. I like that they did that, so let's check everything. Let's use the eye, there is on the calendar, the radio, the crosswords on the table, and um, here. Let's take a look at here first. Let's let's open it, actually. Um, okay, so when there is no eye, there is me, it means that uh, there is nothing else to interact, unless what it's already marked. Open. Premina kept ice cream for me and oil there. But now I could only see meat bits for meat bites for soup and clumped together. Pe pelmeni? 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 I will check the glossary. I grew to hate them already. Uh, let's see what is this. A Russian variety of dumplings made by boiling thin unleavened dough filled with mines meat. One may even call it Russian fast food. Okay, thank you. And that's it. Let's go back. Let's check it here. The side of an old ocean freezer was checkered with my childish drawings, mom's recipes and all kinds of stickers from bubble gun with dinosaurs that oily liked so much. Among that still life picture hung a piece of ruled paper with the phone number of the police officer who visited, visited us. First Lieutenant Tikhonov Sorry, as I said again, uh, all the Ru Russian pronunciation will be wrong, I'm pretty sure of it. I read inside my mind, looking at the officer's sprawling handwriting. A scrap of paper was held by two pieces of a broken magnet from some old Soviet toy, and those pieces just barely covered up the numbers as if it to taunt me. I leaned toward it to unveil the mystery and take the piece to a safer place where it would wait for its time when I would finally find Volva and be the first to call the police with the happy news. Anton! Mom's reproachful eyes stared at me. Зачем тебе? Не трогай, потеряй же. Angering my mom's what angering my mom was the last thing I wanted, so I lowered my hand. Okay, so let's check the crosswords. I took a peek at mom's crossword. She would get very angry when someone gave her advice, so me and dad faked knowing the answer and being, and being about to reveal it all the time. I smiled at the fleeting thought. Vertical, fine letters, the name of the Philistine date that protected them from viper bites and had a nickname, the Lord of Flies. Second letter is E. Hmm. Okay, so let's check the radio. MTS Russia объявила экстренное предупреждение из-за неблагоприятных погодных условий. По прогнозу синоптиков, к региону приближается циклон, из-за которого ожидается сильный снег, метель, снежные заносы на дорогах. Будьте осторожны и берегите себя. Okay, so little information. Let's look at the calendar. 
The decrypt and stain covered calendar was once my favorite form of entertainment in grandma's house. I remember waking up and running to the kitchen so I could tear off yesterday's leaf first thing yesterday's leaf first thing in the morning. Leaf, yes. As if the coming day would get lost in the taiga forest without any without my help. One day closer to New Year's. One day closer to Grandma's funeral. I haven't touched this calendar for years now. But since the time they started writing dark and spooky death chants that only made me gloomy instead of funny proverbs and superstitions, to be exact. I grabbed a dusty calendar leaf with caution and it tore off effortlessly. Sadly, the spooky description from my childhood were still there. Seven horses carry the log. If seven can carry, bring the eighth, the eighth from a ferry. They will take it away and never come back. This is the fate the log cannot escape. I crumpled the grey leaf and threw it and threw it onto the waste bin, hoping to get rid of the anxiousness that washed over me. It was spreading inside me like a ink stain on bloating paper. Okay, so let's lie to mom now. It was difficult to lie to mom, but there was no other way for me to run away from home. Mom, там что-то с телевизором случилось. Картинка какая-то тусклая и экран весь в полосах. Mom's face became visibly distorted. Без ножа меня режешь. Дострелялся вот так своих. Говорила же, посадите мне кинескоп своей приставкой. Где мы теперь мастера найдем в дыре этой, а? Может быть, просто настройки сбились? Сходи, посмотри, пожалуйста. Нормально же работал с утра. Из-за снегопада, наверное, неполадки. Mom rubbed her hands clean on her apron and went to Oilia's room. Okay, so mom is not here. Let's pick up the note and go outside. Yes, got it. So, useful connections. Senior Lieutenant... Uh, okay. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna try that. And the telephone number. Good. So now, let's go adventure ourselves outside. I opened the front gate and went into the field. Carefully so mom wouldn't see me from the window. When I crossed half of the distance toward the forest, the snow piles became as high as my knees. I remember my nightly fears. I saw... Oh, okay. The, the birds here. Good. Cool. I saw those silhouettes around here. They were jumping around, holding hands. That hap hypnotizing music it started playing in my head all on its own. In the light of day, those distance, distant figures felt like a simple dream. The sun turned my nightmares to ash, but the aftertaste was still there. Distant ringing in my ears, distorted shadows crawling on the snow alongside me. And a barely audible whisper in my head, blurry and almost kind. Everything was silent. So silent I felt like the world was stopped. Totally empty. No ground, no sky, no parents, no Olia. We'll just save here real quick. I haven't saved yet. Save the game. Let's go back. Okay. Let's go. The time reached its limit. A one way trip that ended at the forest's piney stockade. Sometimes silence was much scarier than any scream. Our parents would scream at each other while arguing and both me and Oilia turned to stone, listening to them. But then always came the ringing silence. Our apartment became numb a couple of days before we departed. It was hard to remember the last time mom and dad joked around, laughing or spent time together, almost like all of it was in a previous life. When they kissed with, when they kissed with Olia present, she always frowned and snorted in a funny way. But one day it all changed. Something important had left our home, and something scared filled the remaining void. It was as 
if a fire broke up and our parents were hurriedly packing our belongings, trying to save themselves and us. From who, though? From... Oh, oh, there you... There are some footprints here. Just notice, look. I hadn't noticed that in the prologue. Cool, cool detail. Okay. Uh, from the people with dead cold eyes who sometimes visit us in our previous home. The eyes that only saw balls of worms on the black ground and everything. And somewhere far away a siren was going off, trying to warn us of the coming menace. I, sh I shuddered, chasing away my delusions and looked around. There were only me, this white field and the wind that was wiping up icy dust and belts of powdered snow. I squinted from the sun and turned my eyes to the sunless forest. It looked especially dark in contrast with the blinding whiteness. The snobby tree roots slithered under the snow like fat snakes. Rotting leaves and coniferous needles froze into the ice. Dry, pricked branches intertwined, bringing up uncomfortable thoughts about fences. Were they protecting the forest? Or were they keeping something from breaking out? Some object was hanging from one of the pointed branches. I tried to get closer, drowning in snow, and when I almost got to the edge of the forest, I saw a knitted mitten. It looked like a, wood, a wounded bird almost among the hungering semi-dark, sorry. Should I take it to the police? The senior officer looked gloomy, but he still reminded me of Captain Casanova from my favorite TV show called The Streets of Broken Lights. So let's check what that means. The Streets of Broken Lights, a Russian mystery TV series telling a story of the daily life of Russian police officers. Police officers. It's the longest running series in the history of Russian TV at the moment. Hmm. Pretty nice. Pretty cool. He was also always anxious, with a tired look in his eyes, but still brave and strong. Will this meeting help them find the lost boy? Bo okay, so there was a voice in the background. I will read it nonetheless, so it's Vova. I heard a distant shout, it looked like it came from the river. Vova. As if the trees were calling out to someone. Vova resounded closer to me. Someone was standing there, behind the trees, hiding. Vova. I knew someone was looking for the lost boy, but still, something was unsettling about that figure. Its stillness, how it was bent unnaturally toward the ground. Its blackness. There is no one there, just branches and roots. It's all just my, it's all just my imagination. A nearby bird flapped its wings loudly. Oh man, what? A shadow split from the tree and disappeared from my sign. There was something here. I looked away for just a moment, but when I turned my gaze back to the same place, it was gone. When I played on the prologue, that got me and it got me again now. That's good. So it was my imagination, after all. Silence reigned for a painfully long time. My muscles were tightly sprung, my heart was beating somewhere near, somewhere in my throat. Any noise, any little movement, any small whisper from the ticket and I would spring. But nothing of sort happened. I looked at the mitten once more. Okay, let's save. Uh, let's save here. And I will take it. I decided to take the lonely mitten from the branch. V 
Volva. A shout rumbled across the field and dissolved into the distance. No echo, no hope for a reply. I stepped toward the bristly trees and tried to claim my find. It didn't budge. I pulled harder, the branch cracked and the mitten tore off, landing my head with a squishy sound, all too heavy, wet. I squeezed it without thinking and something dark spilled from it, forming a tiny string between the mitten and the snow. The steam rose from the snow pile. I froze in place, studying my palms in disgust. Red on blood. The sound of cracking branches invaded the silence. He didn't have to think twice, I didn't have to think twice before running away. Someone was chasing me from the darkness, breaking pine branches close in the distance with giant leaps. The snow was slowing me down, crazy thoughts flew through my mind. I will get caught, they will get me. I will get dragged into the thicket, I will be gone forever. But there was one more voice, probably one of reason. It gave me strength, it spurred me on. You can do it, don't stop. I heard an animal roar behind me. It was so loud my ears went numb. I felt like the sound had came from a pack of hungry beasts rather than a single one. Their nostrils sucked in, sucked in freezing air. They sensed my fear. Two giant wings flapped above my head. The normal shadow flew over the clearing, a hoot, a wheeze. The roars were coming from all directions now, from the dry up raspberry bush, from twisted pines, from under the windfall. Hurry, run, don't look back. It felt like I was inside a nightmare. The snowy clearing became vicious like quicksand. I was stuck in place. I pulled my legs from the mushy trap just to be caught in a new one even deeper than before. I continued to drown, sinking deeper and deeper with every desperate push. Was the snow ever this sticky? I screamed in horror after realizing it wasn't, this wasn't snow. Someone or something in the snow pile was clutching my pants. I gathered all my strength and rushed forward. The pressure on my leg was gone, my boot slipped out of the hole and my soles were on a hard surface again. I reached a clear path with one jump and from there ran to my house. Its gloomy facade, facade it didn't look treating me now. That house was my line of defense for the shadows that flapped their wings and the creatures that were hidden under the snow. I tripped over the doorstep and smashed into the door. In all my hurry, I still managed to notice the claw marks, as if a dog was striking the wood with its pawns demanding to be let in so it could escape the cold. I hadn't noticed, I hadn't noticed those marks before when I was leaving. The heartbeat in my ears was much louder than my surroundings. I couldn't hear whether someone was following me or not. What if they were already in on our front yard and Mona had locked the door? Drowning in fear, I pulled on the doorknob and it obediently gave away. I rolled into the hallway and shut the door behind me. Porch planks creaked as my pursuers ascended the stairs. Pursuers, my finger slipped off the lock and I couldn't click it onto place. I glittered my teeth and pulled hard on the iron knob, wiping it be between the boards. I stared blankly at the door. Someone was standing on the other side of the pitiful, flimsy barrier that was probably less useful than blankets. Wheezing brief reached into the house and crashed at me in waves. It smelled of pine and sweet sweat. Mom peeked out of the kitchen and chastised me with the same frigid voice she was she's always used when talking to dad. Okay, so before I go in, uh I like the 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 other noises that the they put in the game. So Anton briefing and the sound of the uh, the creatures. It was pretty good, it was pretty nice. Um 
it's a different experience from the prologue that I played. Uh, those sounds, for more that they are just sounds, they actually add to the experience. That's pretty nice. So that's good for the people that did this game. It's pretty awesome. I snuck a glance at the door. The smell was gone and the breath was true. The breath was true. If there was someone in the first in the first place, of course. If there was someone okay. Here, near five meters away from mom, my fear was slowly weakening, melting like snow in spring, and with it the last bit of strength I had left I had left my body too. My legs gave away. I propped myself up against the wall so I wouldn't fall over. Mom's expression had changed immediately. The cold mass of strictness and detachment was gone. Mom looked the same as before all those quarrels. She finally saw my condition. My wet pants plastered with snow. I got afraid she would cry. I reached out to her like when I was very little and wanted her to cuddle me. But mom regained her composure fast and put on her usual face. Her eyes shined like steel. Her voice rang out. I stuttered as soon as I started explaining myself. Tears weared up in my eyes. Mom leaned toward me and sniffed my clothes like a beast, searching for the smell of tobacco. Then she squinted her eyes in suspicion and looked into the front yard. Her expression changed in an instant and she covered her mouth with her hand. My heart started thumping as if I became a prey once again and my pursuers were following me in the field. I could swear that I've heard something scratch at the door, just like in my nightmare. Mom beckoned me with her finger and gathered all my and I gathered all my remaining bravery to look into the kitchen window facing my fear. I could barely discern some hairy silhouettes swimming in the snow through the icy winter patterns on the glass. Dogs! Just a small pack of strays, with no name and owner, barely reminding me of the hungry monsters that live on the far on the edge of the forest. Божечки, ты их испугался? Да они сами тебя перепугаются, Антон. Они гнались за мной. Oh, bunny. The smile had slowly disappeared, disappeared from mom's face. Now she looked at the dogs as if it was her first time seeing them. Mom? Wow, she's... she's very cruel, right? Mom signing in annoyance, annoyance, and I felt so bitter that I bit my lower lip and fixed my gaze on the cobweb ridden corner. Well, some detective I am. In reality, I wasn't risking my life among monsters, but rather my pants among a pack of stupid strays. And what for? Um, what use do I have for this? Mitten. Of course. A dark and sticky mitten that belonged to the lost boy made a squishy sound in my hand. Seems like I was clutching it the whole time. That's my trump card as a detective. I hurried to present this clue to my mom. Mom, look, it's Vovina Varishka. Man. Ну того, про которого утром милиция спрашивала. Она вся в крови, на дереве висела. Вон там, могу показать. Давай в милицию скорее позвоним, как нас участковый просил. Мам, гляди! Фу. 
A shadow of doubt slowly creeped, crept onto Mom's contorted face, as if she was trying to remember something distant. Like someone tries to remember their dream, but the images slip away. At the moment, I realized the mitten was actually wet from the snow. Uh, something cool that this game does is the, the fact that it is in black and white. So when the characters say something, like my mom, gray, green eyes, or uh, the off the gray eyes, and oh, it's red, it's blood. It's pretty cool because you c even you can't uh, see what it actually is. So that's pretty nice. It's, it's a pretty uh, nice thing. It keeps up the, the suspense, right? There was no blood whatsoever. I wanted to sink through the floor from embarrassment. Come here. Oh, sorry. Sorry. A golden colored pill reminiscent of a dead wasp fell into my palm. So I had to swallow the bitter medication, drinking it down with similarly awful water that gave off a taste of chlorine. Maybe it wasn't Vova's mitten. Maybe it wasn't a mitten at all. Just like the forest monsters. And Oilia's owl. Am I going mad? What's happening to me? Maybe the this pill that he said is something that will affect him in some way. Maybe uh, because he said that he took one in the morning, right? So maybe every day he took one, and now it's the second. So I don't know if it's um, real monsters. But, or if it's some kind of psychological horror or something like that that's happening. And the suspense is actually pretty nice. It's pretty good. What's happening to me? Either the pill had an immediate, immediate effect, or my overexerted brain didn't let fear inside anymore. Serenity washed over me, bringing any indifference along with it. So maybe those are pills to calm himself out, maybe? Антон, выпил? Можешь, если захочешь. Раздевайся. Уснул, что ли? Нет, мам, просто задумался. Интересно, о чем же? Так, глупости всякие. Мам scrutinized me with suspicious eyes, as if she wasn't sure she was looking at her own son and not some doppelganger that came from the forest. No, it, I don't think it's um, a doppelganger, I think it's just a figure of speech, right? Maybe, who knows? Точно все нормально? У тебя такое лицо было, когда милиционер про окно спросил. Все нормально, мам. She heaved a deep sigh. Хорошо. It seemed like the house had changed. The sofa's fabric had become discolored. Is, is he actually looking like this right now? He's looking to things in black and white? Fingerprints appeared on the bathroom tiles. Maybe, because I can see some scratches. And so maybe he's um, seeing things black and white. The light bulbs also felt different, dimmer in... Oh no, okay, so no. Even the saliva inside my mouth had a different taste. A melody from Aladdin could be heard from the upper floor. Olya was done rewatching her favorite Little Mermaid episodes and switched to the other to other tapes. I slowly changed into my home clothes, stopped before the sink, and studied my reflection in the mirror, like I was trying to solve one of those spotted difference difference puzzles. Then I went upstairs. Jafar's and Iago's voice died down. 
I walked past Euler's bedroom and slipped into my own. Okay, so let's check the eye. I will check the window. The forest did not look as grim during the day. And tangled tree branches in the distance and the snowy field, field between our house and the forest brought, brought a sleepiness to my eyes. But sometimes I would still catch myself looking in the window at the icy treetops instead of doing my homework. Oh, okay. Here. There's somebody here. It's probably Oilia, right? I don't think it's something else. Probably her. But he didn't notice when I checked the window, so maybe he's not seeing it? Well, let's keep on going. Uh, the toys and then the book. Okay. The there's in the wall as well, so let's go for the wall and then the toys. I, I dreamed of becoming an artist since dad brought, bought me my first comic book. Fly. Magazine was the coolest. I spe especially liked the big space related edition with alien monsters and that funny episode about a Gendarm. I think that's how you say it. Let's check Fly. Let's see what is that. Fly, the first Soviet and Russian periodic adult comics magazine, extremely po popular during the crazy 90s. What made the magazine stand out was the refusal to use material from its foreign counterparts. I started drawing all kinds of stuff since that day and I seem to be getting pretty good at it. One of my letters even got published in Fly once, maybe someday they will even publish my comic. Okay, good, cool. Check the toys. My Triceratops figurine. I know about all sorts of dinosaurs. Velociraptors, Afrovenators, a Hypsilophodon. Oh man, I can't. <laughs> I remember going to the movies to see Jurassic Park, back when we still lived in the city and, talk and taking pictures with the T-Rex in the hall. It turned its head and roared. It was awesome. And next to it was a Robotech Transformer. I love this cartoon. When a jet fighter speeds up in the intro among the sounds of blaster fire, you know your next 20 minutes will surely be amazing. Zentradi's space station is captured. Rick, get ready for battle! And the book? Monsters, Ghosts, UFOs. The Encyclopedia of Paranormal Phenomenon from Roseman Publishing. I've learned about the Loch Ness monster, Medusa, Gorgon, and Bigfoot from there. Ole is always scared of the book. She could barely handle sifting uh, through the monsters, to the monster, sifting through the monster and alien sections with me. But the middle part, where they start to talk about ghosts, really freak her out. I even remember hunting ghosts after I would read that book. I measured the distance between items on my table every evening and checked if they moved due to some supernatural force come the morning. What child didn't do that? I sure did. They didn't. But to be honest, what was I was expecting? To meet Casper the Ghost? Casper the Ghost was awesome. I remember watching as a kid. Don't remember the plot nor anything, just remember the character and that. I would like to watch it. It was... It was very nice. And this game is... <laughs> It's kind of nostalgic sometimes with the Kinder Surprises, the Magoji and those, all those things that the characters say. So, man, that's cool. Okay, so let's save. I don't know what will happen. And let's open this. It's just that, right? The curtain, the drawings, the toys and the magazine. Okay, so let's open. One of the drawers was empty. I hid the policeman's phone numbers along with the mitten there. Where are you, Volva? The simple, the simple action drained the last bit of strength from me. I sat on the bed. And only then I noticed there was someone behind the curtains. My tired hand dropped it to the sheets. Whether it was due to medication I took or the stress I underwent, the room began to contort, as if the wind was blowing the walls out like a pair of sails. The room's corners bent and undulated. The only stable thing in the whole room 
of the figure between the wind, the window sill and the curtains. A flimsy piece of cloth was stuck to my hidden visitor, just like a servant of sorts. Hola. I think it's Euler. Uh, she said in the beginning, right, that she... No, uh, Anton said in the beginning that she always hides in, her, in his room, so might be her. Who else would be standing there? I stood up and licked my dried up lips. Ola, очень the silhouette was unmoving. Maybe it's not. It was enveloped softly by the curtains. As if there was a thick layer of darkness there, not a human being. I reached toward the curtains. Badum, badum. That my heart, controlled by medication. The wind sang in the field with a chorus of voices. For a second I wanted to return to the bed, just lie down and watch the person behind the curtain, knowing full well they were looking back at me. They were looking without blinking waiting for me to fall asleep. Plastic rings rustled against the holder when I pulled open the curtains. <laughs> of course you, you knew, of course. A blindly bright halo lit up above Olya's head with the setting sun as the background. My sister was shining. When she was just a baby, that all dead always used to say she was shining with happiness. Always retorted, but dad always retorted. But dad, she's not some flashlight. But I brought her to the window one day and some light powered, powered on her smiling face. I felt like I was holding a child woven from light. She was just like my mom when she was little, before she put on her sad mask of tiredness and switched to her to her commanding tone of voice. Nichevo, prosta. Oilia ran up to the table, her eyes round, and asked. Ты что-то украл и теперь прячешь? Ты вор? Что, глупая? Ничего я не крал. A clear image came to mind that mitten hanging from a tree branch. What if I did steal it after all? From the forest, from the tilted figure standing behind the black trees. Olya could be selfish and stubborn when she wanted. Olya wore a floating smile. An oath she heard in one of the movies about the pioneers we've watched. Let's check. Pioneer movement, an umbrella term for communist children organizations existing around the world. Somewhat reminiscent, reminiscent of the scout movement. Reminiscent, okay. Не говори так. Olya nodded and made a gesture with her hand, looking her mouth with an imaginary key. Locking her mouth, sorry. She was filled with curiosity that was splashing in her giant eyes. I opened the drawer and Oilia leaned in, holding her breath. It looked like there was not just a simple mitten, but some sort of exotic critter. She said that as if she couldn't understand what she saw. Теперь понимаешь, как опасно гулять в лесу, особенно детям. Ему, наверное, там очень холодно. Его найдут? Люди, oh, sorry, sorry. Обязательно. Участковый по домам ходит, всем фотографии его показывает. Оля traversed the room with care and pressed her tiny palms against the window. А почему он по домам ходит, а не по лесу? Mm, that's a good question. Боится? The question caught me off guard. Милиционеры ничего не боятся. И лес они прочесали. Yeah, right. Flashed in my clouded mind. Did they really check every nook and cranny where darkness, cold and whispers of ice branches dwell? 
If that's the case, how did they miss the mitten? Or did it appear later for me? I changed the topic. As if trying to get Oya as far away as possible from the forest ticket. Если я сам найду пропавшего мальчика, нам может награду дадут. Кучу всякого, как в поле чудес. Oh, it's 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 um it's moving. Field of wonders. Wait, what? Oh, okay, okay. So it didn't mark, but uh, well, a fortune was uh, marked in the glossary. So let's take a look. Field of Wonders, a Soviet and Russian TV game show, still running to this day, coming out every Friday, can be described as a partially adapted version of Well of Fortune. Oh, okay, so I think what happened is that they put Well of Fortune uh, in, the, in the translated without using the Field of Wonders. That's why I think it wasn't uh, marked. Oile wasn't listening to me. She was piercing the forest with incredibly, incredibly adult eyes, uncharacteristic for her. I was picking my words with utmost care. I forced them out of my over-exerted over brain. Мне кажется, он какой-то, как бы сказать, проклятый, что ли. Как в сказке? Нет, скорее, как на той страшной кассете, что родители прячут. Ойля shivered and stole a glance at the window. Я видела, как ты убегал. О, oh, so she За тобой кто-то гнался? What? She didn't saw the dogs? Нет, просто... Чтобы мама не волновалась, спешил домой. As I looked at my sister, my heart was tearing apart. She was so fragile. It was so easy to stifle her light. A gust of wind and her small fire would be gone. Хорошо тебе. Меня вот мама не пускает даже на крыльцо. Как принцесса в башне сижу. Никуда не могу выйти. Так и умру тут от скуки. Не придумывай. От скуки еще никто не умирал. У тебя же есть я и мультики, а мама с папой скоро помирятся. Знаешь, что бы я загадала на следующий день рождения? Чтобы родители тоже в детей превратились, и мы бы все вместе играли, как раньше. Ага, а если бы они стали размером жука, то мы бы их в спичечный коробок посадили. Оля гиггled and tugged at my sleeve. Тоша, пойдем Алладина смотреть. Fatigue won over my desire to be with my little sister. I was washed over by some sort of heinous apathy. Вымотался я. Что-то не хочется. Ну пойдем. Мне скучно одно, а мама занята все время. Можно выбрать другой мультик, который ты еще не видел. Да я все наши кассеты наизусть знаю. А вот и не все. Ты Питера Пэна не видел. Помнишь, ты уснул на середине? А там потом такое? Ну пойдем. Пойдем. Давай попозже. Рассказать тебе, чем все закончилось? Утром расскажешь. Утром не захочу. Придумала. А давай в прятки. Нет, Оль. Тогда нарисуй мне динозавра. Оля, блин. Нарисуй, нарисуй. Доставь ты меня в покое. I blurted, I blurted it out without thinking, and then I was immediately taken back. I would never scream at my little sister like that. Oile stared at me in shock. Her lips started trembling, a precursor to tears. My chest, my chest was seething with disgust and embarrassment. What's happening to me? I hurried to prevent Oile from crying. Ладно, уболтала. Давай смотреть мультики. Только недолго. Уже не хочу. 
I came up to her, put my hands on her soft head. Пойдем. Питер Пену посмотрим. Ага, ты опять уснешь. I smiled and lifted her chin. Her eyes were wet and felt bottomless. Не усну, обещаю. А потом я тебе целого трицератопса нарисую. Olha Huber, Olha rubbed her eyes with a sleeve of her pajamas, and a shining smile returned to her face. Давай ты пока кассету перемотаешь, а я у мамы попрошу сгущенки с хлебом. Только утром свежие привезли, как ты любишь. Неси, только аккуратнее, а то разольешь. Опять ругаться будут. Спорим, не разолью. Olha disappeared into the doorway and I dragged my feet into the neighboring room. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, I will save. That was actually a lot of talking, so let's save here. Good. Let's check the eye. So it's the pig, the little bear, and the window. So let's go for the pig first. A piggy bank. Oile is saving money for a real puppy because dad said that taking care of him will take a lot of money. Okay. <laughs> Oile's countless toys. An old teddy bear in the main attraction here. Is the main attraction here, sorry. Oile doesn't sleep without it. And she digs her nose into its fur when she sleeps. The window. The scary window where Oile sings that a cursed owl every night, lurking in the dark. Oile keeps curtains open during the day, but as soon as the twilight comes, she shuts them tight, so she, so she wouldn't see the pair of hungry eyes outside. Okay, now let's turn on the TV. The old photon TV was gathering dust in the corner. This is a pretty cool image, you can see Ant on him. So nice. All that was left was clicking the button on the front panel. The tube, the tube warmed up and a famili and familiar white noise started dancing on the black screen. I almost reached out to turn on the VCR when the noise calmed down and a blurry image appeared for a moment. It was a dark taiga forest, just like the one outside my window. The, the picture split the screen in half. Something creepy resembling human speech was coming out of the speaker. Just a few moments later, the scenery was again overshadowed by noise. Did it catch some rogue signal? Local TV station only really showed Soviet cartoons, and even that was pretty rare. And only just recently, I used to always watch Robotech before school. It was so awesome. Maybe I should tinker with the antenna. What if I catch this channel again? On the other hand, Olya had asked me to find the tape. It wouldn't be nice to disappoint her. But in my sleepy state, I didn't have the strength to do all of it. Okay, so... I will set the TV. I want to see what was that. Okay, so just a, a little thing here. Uh, I already played. The, I already played the prologue, and this part, this part that uh, is going to happen right now, there will be a lot of flashy scenes. So, just a reminder for everyone. Okay, let's set. The picture finally cleared up, but the moment I rejoiced at finding that weird sign again, the TV started ca c coughing, a voice barely coming to the cacophony, sorry about the words. Small snowy hills were lined up on the screen, pierced with rickety crosses, and a male voice was narrating with a slow, mournful voice. Беспросветная кладбищенская ночь. В то мрачное время 
Маленькая Сеня встретила свою судьбу в лице чудовищного обитателя дикой чищобы. The picture is new, by the way. Местные называют его не иначе, как хозяин леса. I froze and did my best not to move, as if by doing that I could scare away the narrator. I listened closely to his every word. Зверь разобрался с беспомощной девочкой по-хозяйски. The camera panned across the snow with something black spilled over it, looking for rigid pieces of cloth that were thrown around all over the place. I didn't want to think whether Senya's remains were wrapped in there, so I shut my eyes without thinking. The voice continued. A close-up shot of the face of an old homeless woman, weary from life and alcohol abuse, rattled on the screen. The old woman splattered saliva all over the rectangular mic. Oh man. The rest of her comparison was swallowed up by the sound of a horn. I mean, what was it? What was that? Obscenities were covered by another beep. Torn between believing in what was said and sh shrugging it away, I decided to, re to record the remaining part of the documentary for some reason. I quickly grabbed the tape that was on top of the TV and put it into the VCR without even looking at the cover. I pressed the rack, turned the sound up and paid attention to the sleeping signals. The sleeping signal. Подчиняются все звери, пернаты и лохматы. Они предвестники появления самого чудовища. Okay, so as of again, there will be some flashy screen um, soon, so just be careful. This is the warning. Если слышать его вдалеке, то скорее всего он знает, где вы живете. Если порог дома истоптан звериными следами, а за окном караулят птицы, прячьтесь, он уже идет за вами. А если однажды ночью, проснувшись, вы увидите глаза в окне, то скоро... Is that the, the owl that he's talking about? Скоро. 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 Oh, my anticipation. Oh. Okay, last warning. Скоро. 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 The TV suddenly went mad and looked with the last word over and over, piercing my ears. Man, that's so ugly, oh man. I got goosebumps all over my spine. Even that I played the prologue, I still, I still got goosebumps there too. The tape ended and was rewinding to the beginning. The sound of a rustling tape reminded me of leaves in the wind and the low howl of the beast. 
I woke up from my stupor, stupor and pressed the button. The VCR ejected the tape. For a moment, I thought it was stained with saliva. But it was just the light from the chandelier making the black plastic glossy. And then I saw the cover. Oh yeah, that's Peter Pan. Oops, I recorded over Peter Pan. That was, that's what I get for hurrying. It was bad enough that I ruined the oilless cartoon, but I also put this creepy stuff over, the, over it. I can't let her see this. We'll drown in three years. I snuck a glance at the door. I could hear the clatter of glass and the squeaky floorboards. Oli appeared in the doorway. My sister bought the tray with unevenly cut bread and a whole can of condensate, condensed milk. Uh, no, I Come on, thank fake de detective. She's so stubborn. Придумал. Давай сначала пару серий черепашек ниндзя. Согласна? Willa frowned, but ultimately gave up. She put down the, the tray and crossed her hands on her chest. That's already opened. As soon as, oh, something appeared on the screen. As soon as I stood up, colorful dots popped up. Oh, that's okay, so that, that was it. Uh, popped up before my eyes, and my sore legs were pierced by thousands of needles. Only when I reached the sofa, I realized that that oh, that the cam was already open. Oila had tricked me, played me for a fool. My stomach became heavy. I wanted to rush toward the TV, but my little sister was faster. She picked up the remote and proclaimed in a victorious tone. I couldn't even open my mouth, and the VCR had already eaten the accursed tape. The the words actually are pretty good in the game. There's a lot of um, a lot of other words that I not that I don't see used so often. And it's pretty it's pretty nice. She would play it, and then black crosses on unnamed graves, empty crypts. Bloody scraps on the snow and the insane devil's wench. I'd better tell the truth. Оля, стой! Я тебе конец кассеты нечаянно стер. Отдай ее мне и возьми любые две мои. Ты чего? Не мог ты стереть. Мы с папой всем кассетам зубики пластмассовые выломали. Отверткой. Теперь ни на один мой мультфильм ничего записать нельзя. My little sister pressed the triangular play button on the remote. I squeezed on the inside, awaiting the out of this world voice of the narrator. But I saw the duel between Peter Pan and Captain Hook instead. I signed in relief. My head, heavy as a leaden ball, now rested in my hands. Ole smiled in joy. She put the tape on rewind and started spreading milk over her bread. And when the cartoon started, she forgot about everything in the world. As if she really got transported to the Neverland, like she always wished. To be honest, I also imagined myself there, in a land where one never ages, where no one argues over little things, where no one listens to fights and the sound of broken plates at night. But now Peter Pan's land was specially far away from me. My thoughts dragged on, I stumbled upon the horned beast that awaited me among the trees. The narrator's mournful voice haunted me, sliding over bushes and ravines, like a winged carnivore would track its prey. I felt like I was dreaming with my eyes still open. Then my sister's scream, oh sorry, 
Then my sister's scream pulled me back to reality. I got out of bed, fighting my downsiness, and closed the curtains. Close. I did my best not to look outside toward the treetops, toward the taiga forest which seamlessly drew closer and closer. Of course, it was just a visual effect from shadows of branches scrapping the snow. I swiftly grabbed Oila's hand and looked her in the eyes. I was trying to transfer at least some of my courage and determination. But did I really have those qualities? We followed Peter, Peter Pan's adventures as if nothing had happened, as if the forest didn't kidnap kids, as if our parents weren't tearing each other apart bit by bit. Captain Hook was running away from a crocodile, and Captain Pan was heading to London on a gilded sailboat. By some miracle, I tasted, tasted. Oh, sorry. I lasted longer than my little sister. Olya's eyelids had dropped. She started snorting lightly, resting her chin on the side of the bed. The chorus was sing singing the ending song. The world of Disney was lit up by a silvery moon. No. Another moon peeked from under the first one, scary and wan, hanging over the taiga forest. The horrific report got recorded right over the credits. My throat went dry, my pulse became faster. I looked toward Olya. She smacked her lips in her sleep. I squeezed the remote with all my might, ready to press stop and press stop any moment. I rewound, rewound the recording, checked if it was intact, and then carefully took out the tape. The protective pin was still in place. I stood up and left Euler's room. Whether it whether it was by providence or by curse. I had the tape alongside the mitten at the exact moment mom peeked into my room. Cursed tape. Okay, so I'm gonna save it real quick. Um, this part here is from chapter 2 already, so the prologue, if you're playing on Steam, it's free. Uh, the full version of the game, full on quote, be uh, quote unquote, because the game is on early access still. Uh, has some other cutscenes and some other pictures that appear uh, during the prologue. But now I'm going to be pay playing uh, Chapter 2. I don't know what will happen. I had not played Chapter 2 yet, just the prologue, as I said. And now it will be uncharted territory for everyone. So let's go with it. Enough playing around. Adults think everything is so simple, as if sound sleep would ensure my classmates would like me. I covered myself with a blanket, with a blanket up to my neck and listened to the house humming, to something invisible rustling in the corners. My inner voice had a question for me, do I want to hear the mysterious flute again? I actually wouldn't want to hear that. 
Yes or no? What? I need to choose that? Okay, so thank you. Maybe it's just a part of growing up and I can't fully understand my old desires. The forest wailed behind the barrier that was my walls. Some ethereal entity wandered the fields. Branches shook as if calling for me. The wind howled on and on in the night. My thoughts were like annoying flies that entered my head before becoming weak and tangled. I didn't notice how I fell into slumber. True Detective 1. It has became... Oh, sorry. It has came after all. The day I feared the most. The first day of a new school term. 